Welcome to Sri and Kira Live. As our world spins seemingly out of control, we are all experiencing time speeding up, chaos shifting to a new level, and a yearning to know the greater mysteries of the universe. What does it all mean? Visionary spiritual teachers and best-selling authors Sri Ram Ka and Kira Ra explore these mysteries, offer live soul readings, and invite you to open up your mind, body, and spirit to the paradigms that are shifting. Bringing you fresh perspectives and timeless wisdom, here are Sri and Kira. <laughs> Namaste and welcome to Sri and Kira Live. I am wisdom teacher Sri Ram Ka. And bowing before our beloved Shiva Shakti, I am Master Lady Kira Ra. And beloved ones, welcome once again to our old paute. <laughs> and actually, as our beautiful Kanyari medicine men taught, it's paute. Uh, actually where we live and they taught us the indigenous meaning and how the name of our village is properly P-A-U separate word T-I uh -huh. pronounced pow T and so that's just part of the energy that we are here to share with you today and I hope you're enjoying as much as we are the energy of being here in old pow T uh, right now and Sri are we able to flip to our other camera yep okay hey we have a surprise for you we're flipping to our other camera right now Here's our live studio audience. Wave, guys. Hello. Woo-hoo-hoo. Hey, we are just so excited. There's actually more of them here than you're seeing. And uh, so uh, just so you guys know, we're only seeing from Patty to Ama. So uh, the rest of you, jump in for a second and say hello. Because there's a lot. There we are. There we are. See, there's a lot more of you here. Yeah. So anyway, let's flip back to that other camera. We have so much to share. And thank you first and foremost to all of you that are tuning in wherever you are and remember you can be calling in now get in over here at oneness talk radio 517-208-1500 that's really filling up fast and of course get in over at our 800 number right over at bbs 888-627-6008 again that's 888-627-6008 and i bet you're chatting over there at youtube i uh, hope so over at official Sri and kira or oneness talk radio and of course tuning in over at bbsradio.com and oneness talk radio.com and all of the affiliates and did we get everybody? You Well, you did a great job. I'm and, so glad. I'm exhausted. <laughs> I'm busy downloading a couple of photos we're going to want to share with our, our wow. viewers you here know, in a minute. So as you're doing that, Shri, pop up the October up-level calendar. All Let, right. Let's dive into what's going on this week right now. Now, I want you to really bring your hands to your heart and really feel into this energy because as you're gazing at the calendar, as, as I know you're feeling, as I know you're, you're really sensing right now, this week, right now, here we are on the 11th, okay? We are one full week in from when we started last Sunday into this pre-retrograde phase. And this Friday, this coming Friday, is going to not only be when the Mercury retrograde begins as the divine mirror, and I'm going to share with you why that language is going to be really phenomenally even more important in about a moment, so Mercury retrograde, remember, is going to be a mirror this time. It's going to be the grand reflection. And it's going to not only begin on the 16th, it coincides with so many things. Number one, that evening, Friday, the 16th, this Friday, it will be an illuminated super new moon yes. up level yes. now this is massive and it's so massive that Sri and i are holding a ceremony for this however there's a catch you have to be in our app to get the invitation so make sure you have our app downloaded uh spiritual mastery with Sri and kira and if you are downloading in the app you will get everything you need will be in the notification so you're gonna have to have those notifications turned on it will be available to everyone who has our app even if you're not part of our mastery team and so just download the app and that's how you'll get the information to join us look for that being updated in your announcements tomorrow with all the month the and, weekly and, updates you know it's important to recognize and thank yeah. you for for reminding that when we gather together yes with clarity <laughs> with a sincere intention and with presence and when we dance is this great you know so much beauty can happen and we influence yeah. the energetics 
quite uh, innocently, actually, because the more we hold joy and the more we hold focus together, we are very, quote, unquote, innocently sending out a wave of joy and presence that others might go, I feel better. I, I would hope. <laughs> Isn't that the intention? <laughs> or at least we would hope to hold that consciousness, yes. would we not? Yeah. 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 Well, you know, Sri, I really want to share about how right now, this week, we've been talking a lot about spirit, more, more than spiritual tenacity, about how in that dance, remember that game on, dark light game on, we've been in it now, it started last month, you know, and, and that dancing between the two of them. This is a week to really dance with the divine. This is a week where you can claim your spiritual tenacity in action. And this is really the week to have that support in front of you. As we are moving toward this Mercury retrograde, as that incredible mirror is opening up before us right now, whatever we bring into the retrograde, whatever has been out of balance is going to have a wide mirror in front of it. So anything in your life that has been out of balance, if, if it's whatever direction you're going to see the mirror in this retrograde and have the opportunity of reunion, being able to really resolve and, and have that rebirth activated and this week is all about supporting that vision and dream and how you support that in the light of densities getting denser denser faster faster remember we're not 12 days as one anymore we're six days as one so there's more space to claim mastery if you honestly claimed that 12 is one of September and so in this moment right now as you are claiming that six day in one with consciousness, knowing that there's that exhale or that breath, that space to offer you through that other energy that's there, that yeah. balance energy, right? A week of the weaving, the divine Shiva Shakti, the oneness. If you do that, then as you dance with the divine this week, your dreams are ready to manifest in ways that you could not possibly comprehend. The connections get bigger. The way you come together with people gets bigger. The, the serendipities get more profound. The accidental connections get wider. And it's because of one thing. There is a secret. <laughs> Spiritual tenacity. And how you are anchoring that. And so I just had to open with that, Shree, because Real important. that's so important about what's happening. It, it really is. And, and I want to remind everybody that we, the universe will conspire for your success if you hold equal passion for yourself. Breathe Pause. that in. Pause <laughs> really, for say that again. The right? universe <laughs> is, in fact, conspiring for you to be yes. successful, provided that you are holding equal passion for yourself. When we doubt ourselves, we're sending a signal of, I don't want a full portion of support. Right. When we have fear, and we're sending a signal of, I can't manifest, I'm pulling away from creation. Yeah. No, because it's too hard. Right? You know, th this is that spiritual tenacity. I mean, this is exactly what this spiritual week is about. Spiritual tenacity right? requires that even though a part of you may be feeling fearful, the other part of you trusts the divine and says, we're going forward anyway. You know, it's like, okay, I get. And this is why anchoring multidimensional presence is so important, right? It's just, it's just critical. And it begins with that fifth dimensional compassion, mm -hmm. right? Really, really holding yourself and loving yourself enough and owning what you've been thinking, right? And, and what does that really mean? It <laughs> means that how often have you talked about we are spiritual beings having a human experience and I trust my divine guidance or whatever? How, how many years have you just had the conversation or pontificated about it with friends or read everything you can read and you think about it all the time, but are you really honest enough with yourself to know if you're really living it? Or are you still dancing with the ego because the ego really, really, really doesn't want you to ascend? Yeah. And you've it's, it's getting to that moment of knowing that. As, you know, as we put in Sacred Union, the journey home so many years ago, the ego is a sly pirate and it will do anything and everything to stop you. And here's, here's the irony, the sweet irony of that, because there is a sweet irony. When you finally get to the moment, whatever your moment is, 
when you finally are like, okay, I'm yours. I get it. It's over, right? It, it, take me. You know, you, we all get to that moment, don't we? When, however you get there, when you pop to the other side through that moment, the ego realizes that it gets to still exist. Yes. <laughs> and that it just gets into a whole new way of being because the you is now commanding the ship. Your creativity soars. The law of instantaneous manifestation is every day. Every day magic is nothing more than you knowing who you are. Everything falls into place. Your dreams expand because the manifestation is so quick you can't keep up with it. And magic happens. And I, I really went here, Shri, at your prompting with what you just said, and also because I really feel compelled that we need to talk about the magic that's happening in real time. Because yesterday yeah. was 10-10, yeah. right? 10-10, yeah. 2020, right? And yesterday, a huge miracle happened yeah, here at Tosa Blue very, Mountain very on powerful. behalf of humanity. And it's, and it's going to get a lot bigger. Yeah, I know. Oh, I just lost my breath. You guys have your breath? They're all holding hands. Show the other camera. Don't keep holding hands. Okay, you've got to see this. I, look, is this too beautiful? And all the ones that are not on camera with you, they're all holding hands. And I didn't even know that. I got oh, my hands we got our way. Thank you. It's such a beautiful moment. Oh, my God. All right. Thank you. Are, are you guys all like as taken as I am right now? I'm like sitting here. I couldn't hold. I like. I was having a hard time holding my breath. And then I looked out. And I was like, well, that's why, <laughs> right? Because there's just all this amazing love as we're getting ready to talk about the miracle of yesterday. Because that's why all these beings are here too, is they are witnesses of these miracles. Yeah. And this is this is for all of us right now in this community. So if you're with us live, really celebrate that you're giving yourself the gift of these Sunday services in this community, right? And if you're catching Watching us in any form of archive, we're time stamped and thank you for feeling the moment right now. You know, authenticity requires congruence. Mm, to be authentic doesn't mean you just have a good spin. <laughs> Far from it. It doesn't mean you know the right words. It means you're willing to live it. Right. You're willing to live what you say. And this is why when you were saying, you know, uh, to own your thoughts, how many of us have put on a good face, but internally the thoughts are going, oh, geez, I hope they don't call on me. I don't want to... <laughs> or, 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 or how about something more realistic, like, yeah, I, I know this multidimensional shit is bullshit, but I'm going to play along with it anyway, or maybe, whatever. It sounds crazy. Yeah, or, or, we get it. We get or it. Or I, I, I don't believe in this, but I'll, I'll fake it, you know? Yeah, <laughs> and, yeah whatever. And whatever it is. Because you're being called out on it, and Mercury retro grade is going to put a light on it baby to the extent that you yep. are serving two masters meaning right? one thought stream and another belief stream to the extent that you're doing that you have split your energy mm -hmm. and divided yeah. we fall there's an old adage the more we split our energy the weaker our forward momentum will become doesn't mean you're weak as a person because, good heavens, you're covering multiple bases. No kidding. How, however, your <laughs> forward momentum will come to a standstill, and all of a sudden you'll get really tired. And that'll be a signal to take a look and get honest. So yesterday, uh, this is my segue into what the magic that was happening and here. And we have lots of photos. And yesterday, movies. what we experienced was an alignment oh. of authenticity. <laughs> And uh, we, we were visited by four, uh, I'm going to call them young men because they're younger than me, but actually these are people in their prime, let go, so to speak. Let's let go of all form of linear age as we even start talking about the miracle of yesterday. So these, these men are They actually, are medicine men. They, they are, are lineage me holder medicine men. These are, these are the ones that are carrying the torch yep. at this time and yep. that are leaders in their community. Yep. And, uh, yep. and these Kenyari... Uh, came a long distance over to, the mountains to be down here from with us. Yeah, mm -hmm. and uh, they live in the province called Kanyar, and it's high altitude. It's cold. Uh, it, they, they it's have, the top of the world. You know, at yeah. night when the sun's up, it's beautiful. When the sun goes down, where's my wool blanket? Kind and of place. And it's beautiful. <laughs> and, and the stunning views. And yeah. what they what has happened to the culture as a result of that is these are strong people. 
they have a vitality to them and they know how to sustain their vitality using the natural herbs and plants and all the medicines that grow in the Andes Mountains. Uh, and when they came here, we wanted to share with them the lost city and ask them to... So I want to back up because uh, yeah. how they got here was we did... These are the, This is the beautiful man and, and it's his family that are the lineage holders of the true Cagnari, which is where we live. We yes. live among the Cagnari, our, our work workers here are Cagnari. And we have started introducing you about the Cagnari and what happened at the Chobshi Museum and when they let us hold the artifact and we showed you that video last week. Well, this was what we were telling you last week, that we were honored to do ceremony with this incredible being who normally doesn't come out to do ceremonies with those that are not Cagnari. So that's the first miracle. And we, when we did that ceremony with him yes. last week, just to catch you up, I believe we shared this with you, we had mentioned that we had started this dialogue with him. Well, Shri and he have been on their little WhatsApp for like a week and a half, two weeks, and they'd be like going back and forth with each other. It was really precious. And finally, he said, okay, we're going to do it, but it has to be on 1010. Well, imagine, yeah. of course, it we had to be 1010. <laughs> Literally, he was the one that dictated the date. And of course, we held our breath and was like, yes, because it was a year ago that we were going to be in Peru re-energizing the ascension portal at the Mirai circles on this day on yesterday 10 10 2020 and we had we had moved that that experience that was going to be held in Peru all of the energy that was going to be found in Peru actually turned out was here and so now those who were journeying with us to Peru are the people you're seeing in the camera however only half of them stayed the journey and so these were the six that were here for this incredible miracle of yesterday, yeah. which was when this beautiful shaman, and who is a true Kanyari medicine man lineage holder, uh, came with his brother, his cousin, and a dear friend. They are an incredible Andean band, and you're going to hear their music. I ran their music underneath the whole video you're going to hear today, music that they were playing, taken live at our ceremony. And not only did they come, I, here's the first miracle is that when Sri showed them pictures of our Temescal and pictures of our fire pit and pictures of the lost city, why they were so intrigued to come was because they too had heard the stories as children of the lost temple, that there was a temple that it was over here that was yet to be discovered. And so they really wanted to come to confirm or deny. <laughs> and they were very clear about that, that this was the temple and you know drum roll please yeah they confirmed this is the temple and the one the the younger the younger cousin who was just precious he was with me a lot when we were up at the top of the temple with them and we have pictures and things we're going to show you he looked at me at one point he was so beautiful he looked me right in the eye and he said and this is you know born and raised here has never been much more out of kanyar and he looked at me and said i've never been in a real temple before Mm -hmm. And I, I was, I don't know which one of us was in more tears, you know, and he just, and when we were at the prophecy stone and his questions and the sincerity and the, the, them, every stone he was blessing, they were blessing with coca leaves yeah. and tobacco and kneeling. And yeah. it was so humbling and so honoring. Yeah. Truly. It, it truly, uh, to me, it was very humbling, and I found a deep respect for those that are carrying, in a very living, sincere way, the respect for all my relations, the respect for Mother Nature. To be able to say, uh, you know, as Kira says, we're approaching the temple, and they, they were just sensing, and when uh, they came to the stone, which marks what we call a gate, an energetic gate to come in, they paused. They touched the stone. They Made offered their coca leaves. And it was yeah. very sincere. When a ritual is offered with sincerity, it's no longer a ritual. It is a sincere moment of connection yeah. and surrender. Yeah. And this is one of the things that we oftentimes lose in modern society is the our spiritual organizations offer rituals and, and many of us become you know, conforming to the ritual, like, let's get on with it. Right. Uh, you know, it, Here's a, the part where I say this. Yeah, here, I know right? what I'm supposed to do. Okay, my and, head's and, really in and, that. And sometimes we re begin to receive a feeling and a, mm -hmm. and a presence from that. I'm not diminishing the power of it. What I am saying is when it's done with full 
presence, mm. it's no longer a ritual. It's a divine communion. Exactly. It's real and now and mystical. And yeah. I began to witness this over and over. And for me, that was a, a true gift, a true reminder that every moment is precious and every leaf and every rock has a gift, is a gift, and can remind you of the gift that you are. Well, and that's so beautiful about this week, right? Because this is that week right now when it is honestly about dancing with the divine within. And that's why, Sri, I'm just loving our backdrop today. It's so perfect. And that when we are dancing with the divine, it means that we are not resisting. Because you cannot dance with that you are resisting. You won't be able to flow with it. It will become hard. It will become... It, it, the word I want to use is self-fulfilling because we are in a self-fulfilling moment. So the question is, what are you self-fulfilling with? Because your consciousness is creating with every breath, with every second, with every moment. And so what are you creating? What are you fulfilling? Where is your focus? If ever there was a moment of steadfast commitment focused awareness, complete trust. Yeah. You know, it really is, not only is it the framework of the support that ignites that Taurus field that holds us in that zero point generation of being the law of instantaneous manifestation, but the other thing that it is, is truly the formula, the absolute formula that will keep you in this moment of knowing that you are living an illuminated life, knowing that you are allowing the inspiration to come because you have remained in that self-fulfilled state that offers compassion, keeping you in the fifth dimension. And in this moment now, and especially this week, the dance with the divine is about lifting through that fifth and honestly touching, if not anchoring, in that seventh dimensional space where judgment is released through that huge aha that allows that energy to start anchoring in your consciousness. It's that truly wider lens that will always hold the view outside of judgment that is there for the moment where you plummet into it, where it becomes a quick bounce and you're back up and you remember. Mm -hmm versus a plummet that you don't know how to get out of. That's how you dance with the divine. Yeah. You dance with the divine. You know it's there. You know, and a, a plummet that you don't know how to get out of, I'm sure everybody can relate to that language. Oh my gosh, yes. <laughs> describing when we are in the uh, emotional uh, pit, whatever that might look like, whatever, right. whatever brought you there. And the thing to remember is the ego, which is the holder of these trauma imprints. The ego is the holder of the, the self-defeating beliefs that would say, I'm not good enough, I deserve to be punished, and life doesn't have bad luck, and all that jazz. The ego can't get you out of the hole. Mm. Only your soul's wisdom can lift you through the delusionary, destructive energy of the ego. The ego can be destructive and creative. But when we're in the dumps, it's only the soul that can pull you through. It's a spiritual solution to a worldly problem, you might say. And that when we relax and trust the universe, we will lift out of momentary reactivity. Mm -hmm. When we don't have trust in the universe, the momentary reactivity is 99% of the screen, and that's what we're going to dance with. That's true. And so, you know, speaking of what we're dancing with, I would like to, to show you guys two, two pictures from when we were walking up to the, um, to the temple yesterday. And Shri, the first one there is the one that says uh, Prophecy Stone Kanyari. Yeah, All right, that let's one. let's give this a try. So let's get, there it is. So here we are, guys. So this picture right here is when we first arrived at the Prophecy Stone. And uh, if I want to, so you know who's who, you see Shri is right there 
there in the right, in the bottom right, in the black hat. Right next to him, this is the brother of the uh, head medicine man. And kind of hidden behind him is his cousin. And then right next to him there is the flute player in their band. And standing right there, putting his hair back uh, in the white shirt, that is Alexander, who is the lineage holder medicine man. And this is all a family of Cagnotti. And in the background there, in the blue shirt with the hat, of course, that's our beloved Angel. Um, and this is the prophecy stone. And I had just explained to them how I was reading it. And they were showing me how they were reading it as well and we were we were saying the same things and so they were very excited and they they immediately knew that it was filled with water and they said yes this used to be big and it would be filled with water and i was like yes and i used to float in it face down and they're like yes and this is how so it was really fascinating that we were filling in gaps of each other's um understanding of this so it was really very exciting uh and so that's the first picture and then let's go to Pro uh throne of attunement so this is the throne of attunement that we have recently been working with and that um what is so beautiful is that all of our beautiful beings here in our live studio audience uh, are going to be the first group that will be going up after this uh, Kanyari activation of all of the sacred centers up there and receiving this attunement in this throne. And so this is actually a, a piece of an ancient throne. You can see where the laser blast had been. You can see kind of the X carvings there in the front there. And yeah. where their hands are is where there are constellation markings and there's ways that you work with it. And I had just finished demonstrating that to them. You're going to see that in the video we're going to offer to you. And this was them uh, working with this. Um, before they even got to the stone, though, they had already confirmed that this was indeed the temple. They, had, they, they started sharing things with us from their prophecy, and we are going to start making a little movie about all of this because we're just getting too much put in front of us not to it, make there, a movie. There's a lot to be revealed, yeah. and, it, and it's presenting at different levels. Yeah. One, one of the things that I've enjoyed is years ago I had read mm. Zachariah Sitchin's work, and uh, and he wrote about the war between the the gods and how uh, Marduk and et cetera. What the, if there was evidence? And that nuclear and laser blast. Mm -hmm. And I'm looking at some of the stones up here, and the stone that has all, uh, you know, they're weathered carvings, and all of a sudden there's a straight line. How do you cut a stone in a straight line? Or literally and, molten stone coming out. Mm-hmm. And, and so it was reminiscent mm -hmm. uh, because we know the stones are millions of years old. This is not a temple that was carved, no. you know, 3,000 years ago. This was carved a million more than years ago. Yeah, and this yeah. is in their prophecy. And they were talking about these prophecies, and this is how this temple has been. And so the one thing that Sri and I have been humbled and honored to know is that, you know, it's no accident we're here. And it's no accident that we were invited many years ago to leave the United States and start the journey we have started and to spend seven years with the Maya and to spend two years in the crystalline realms of Uruguay and then to come to the center of the earth to dance with in the, the heart. divine in the yeah. heart. And it brings yeah. us to again this week because let's not forget we are heading into Navaratri. And and this is one of the things is that I want to show. Can we pop up the calendar again real quick, Sri? Yeah. So on the October up-level calendar, remember here here we are this Friday. Get the app. Join us. Be part of this. It is a profound ceremony. This Friday, the 16th, is not only when the beautiful, huge mirror of this Mercury retrograde is going to open and illuminate. What else is going to happen is it's a super new moon up level. And then Navratri begins, which means the lion that carries beloved Durga soars out into the world for nine days. And so this is a profound found moment and it is a moment that is calling on the divine feminine in ways it has never called on before and before we close the calendar i want to direct you again to the very top of the calendar to this quote from the divine directors you are on earth because you are a master and on earth is code for you can go back to on earth is code for this timeline right now mm -hmm. because it's in this timeline in this experience that we have this collective agreement on how we say things 
and, and how they are looking and perceived. And so you're here in this moment and this moment, this month, this October month, you're here because you are a master. So why not dance with the divine and let the master lead? Yeah. Let that other ego have fun and, and be in its rightful experience so that the illumination, the inspiration, the law of instantaneous manifestation becomes the all that you are. It's important to remember that mastery refers to a spiritual attainment, not a hierarchical dominion. And that to be able to take birth here on earth, to go through the veil of forgetfulness, yeah. and rise back through that again and awaken is the evidence or the proof of the mastery. The master doesn't have to awaken. The master can radiate light in a, a less conscious manner. Uh, however, each of you that's tuned in with this work, these presentations, this energy and this community has said, I choose more. I choose to awaken to the truth of who I am. I choose to serve the expanding light in whatever fashion your heart is called, however your service will look. To find joy in service is, again, part of the feedback of the Master. Mm -hmm. To know that True. you are a complete being and have gifts to share. And even though part of you, the egoic shell, may still be carrying some old wounds from old imprints, the rest of you, the greater environment in which that little shell piece is floating, is driving the car, so to speak. It's carrying you forward. And this is one of the paradoxes that we dance with so often. We have this egoic part, which is a personality self based upon one lifetime and one set of imprints, good and bad. And then we have this mastery piece of ourselves that is, that is timeless, that has, has in access to in infinite wisdom, power, and love, and it's holding presence for this part that is still healing and will probably use most of your lifetime to finish its healing. And, and you, you, that's an individual journey. And, and so to be able to hold both in your consciousness with love is the journey of the master. Because it ignites the compassion. It ignites the right? compassion. When exactly. you can do that, you ignite the compassion, and that's what begins the ascended process. That's what brings you from that, that moment up. And so I'm loving that. And, you know, speaking of going from that moment up, we have two more pictures. Sure. And, and I want to talk a little bit more about the 10-10-2020 experience. Because how was your yesterday? Look at how, many, remember, right now in October, time compression is six as one, which for those who really received the 12 as one as that freeing experience of September, then in this moment, you're dancing in the spaciousness of the creation and you're feeling great, this, this spaciousness. And remember, the opposite of that is feeling the compression. Wow, I had 12, now I have 6. It's going to feel like compression. It's, it's going to it's, it's going to be force. a reverse energy. Lots of people pulling plugs on things and going backwards or really hunkering into a positionality very 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 prevalent right now as well because to the to the density experience right now, it's becoming intense. To the mastery experience, it's becoming <laughs> spacious. So it really is quite extraordinary and, and quite quite ironic within the own, I guess the word I want to use is mind games we give ourselves to stop from arriving at a place that's just so much easier to be. And I, I, I and please hear that, that it's sincere. When we when we give ourselves a gift of saying, if not now when, I mean owning that, mm -hmm. owning it. Seriously, if not now, when? And if you were with us last Monday night, I, I have to jump in because it, it comes into the if not now, well, now yeah. when, right? Yeah. We opened up the Galactic Encyclopedia for the first time in 15 years, and wow. Oh, wow. <laughs> and so yeah. if you were not with us, get there tomorrow night, Monday Magic, the Galactic Encyclopedia, mind-blowing. But last Monday, lesson one. Did we not get that exact conversation in that first lesson, which was basically saying, go for it, Sri. Oh, you don't remember? I'm not trying to, <laughs> I, I, am, I am off in the energy of, of the whole lesson. So that tells you how much attention I'm holding. So go, baby. <laughs> 
Now, I'm going to have a tea. You have a tea. The Galactic Encyclopedia <laughs> carries a profound energy of awakening. Doesn't it, though? And, and uh, I was not awake to you. Yeah, I got this tea. I, I, I was I sit there. <laughs> Oh, it's too fun, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, it's great. And so we truly we invite you to tune in, and you'll you'll get you'll get your giggle. You'll get your giggle on Monday. Okay, so here it is. Here's here's where I was going. In the insolment, right in the insolment. If you read the insolment, right in the insolment, was this incredible message, basically saying, "Look, if you were clear that this was it, if you were clear that right now." This was, this was your culmination. This was your moment. How would you act? What would you do? How would you live? And, and is it not the moment to really invite ourselves? We can all continue to buy the illusionary, densified spin, which is the prevailing planetary thought body that not only wants you afraid, it wants you terrified. Yeah. Let's just get right out there. It, afraid is nothing. <laughs> In the name of terror, they can control you incredibly well. So they don't want you afraid. They want you terrified. And then, while they won't totally restrict what you do, they're going to make it harder. And so for a lot of people, it's just easier to give up. It's easy to hide behind, well, you know, it's too hard. That's a sign. No, no. Maybe it's an invitation to commitment, mm -hmm. steadfast commitment. There's a reason that the divine directors came out and offered that a while ago. Steadfast commitment, that just commitment wouldn't be enough, that the energies were going to become so intense that in order to hold open the Taurus, remember, when you ignite, when you become the zero point generator of the law of instantaneous manifestation, it is because you are holding open that Taurus. And what's holding open on that Taurus in the third dimension? Steadfast commitment, focused awareness. I am not distracted because distraction is the tool that is out right now. And complete trust, meaning my inspiration guides my mind rather than my mind tries to control my inspiration. So really breathe into that because mm -hmm. in this week, as we are being invited to dance with our divine self, it means that the other will also try to pull us away. And, and Shri's itching to remind you of a quote, and there it is. When people are afraid, they will give away their power. When people are terrified, they will give away their soul. And this came from the divine directors through beloved Kira Ra, and it's an important reminder that in our world, of, of the mix of consciousnesses, the, uh, the density pl uh, playground, people that have not anchored in their awakened spirituality are more likely to be afraid. Yes. And are more likely to seek a rescuer. Well, that's victim consciousness, because is it not? Because that is the nature. <laughs> there it is. That's the nature of the fear-based reality. Always. Is there's always a perpetrator, something to be it's afraid always of. always somebody else's fault. It, there's always a victim, and exactly. then we seek a rescuer to make right. it all right. And you will always find an abuser. You can turn anybody into an abuser, even yourself if you have to. And, and so, Shri, I, you know I'm obligated at this point. We have to put up the graphic. There it is, right there. Because this is really, and, and you know, October is just so, so abundantly offering us experience, right? It's an experience energy month. So there it is, the ascended version of this experience. It's all the same spiral. So are you spiraling as victim, abuser, rescuer? Are you in that energy? Many spiritualized egos are very good at using this energy with spiritualized language. But if you're discerning, if you're really conscious of your own egoic shell, then you can see it. And, and, it, and it makes it easy, actually, to start filtering that information which is actually keeping you in that role and the information that's actually freeing you from it. And yet it demands your own discernment. It demands your own commitment, steadfast commitment. Yeah. Because then when we transform, we are the teacher-healer-mentor. 
this is that you because you're always all of it right yeah, you're yeah. always all of it and so we really have the opportunity to either be dancing with the victim energy or dancing with the mentorship and the healer energy right and because uh, we're all healers we are all healers we are all teachers and we are all mentors all of us and that's something else to remember too because and, we have all been the victims too we know the energy. Exactly. It's part of what we grew up with. It's it's you, right? It's the dance. It's it's the bringing it all together. And the uh, in my experience, the essence of moving through the compulsion to dance with the victim energy, mm. to be the abuser, to be the rescuer, the one step above feeling victimy is to say I can rescue others and feel a little stronger, but I'm still hooked into the victim paradigm. Right. And uh, when we begin to discover the peaceful p place inside, and we refer to this as the fifth dimensional compassion, when we lift into the ascended heart, it is easier, easier to <laughs> recognize the I am energy. Mm -hmm. The yeah. I am energy yeah. is foundationalized in a sense of peace, in a sense of not being blown in the wind. It's an oh, I am. And you don't need to add anything more to it. And when we lift it to the seventh dimensional energy, that I am foundational spiritual orientation moves into the sense of no need for the positionality of judgment. No need to separate reality into good and bad, right and wrong, high or lower. It begins with compassion and peace, and then it evolves into spaciousness. Hmm. And that energy is, re in order to claim that as yours, we work with the steadfast commitment, uh, the focused awareness, and the complete trust to lift ourselves into the spaciousness of I am. And this calls in that law of instantaneous manifestation and miracles and our next two pictures. Because, Yay. let me, before you put it up, all right. because as you all know, following our back to our story, <laughs> so as you know, our beautiful, beautiful shaman, our beautiful uh, lineage holder medicine man, arrived here to do this ceremony on 1010 and it took two it took a truck and a car <laughs> for them to bring everything and and i was loving hearing about their journey coming over the mountains down from inga perka and down through this other way and they literally like mountain run to get here it was fabulous and one of the gifts that don simeon who has really been our our guiding light since guatemala and and since his transition has all, never really left he he taught us early on there is a difference between a ceremony and a burning and it was a very powerful discernment yeah. it was a spiritual discernment and and he was referring to that there are many people who claim to do ceremony and they don't what they what they forget is that the way that your things are put together the way that you offer them the way that you clean up the way that you host them the way that you care for them the way that you carry them the that intentionality exactly all of that goes into the ceremony and that many and and especially those that do like just tourism ceremonies it's like here's the kit you know here's your little kit go out and give them a ceremony right and it's okay we do this we do this and it's really you know that's what it is it's a burning and so we were we have always been very sensitive to that ever yeah. since then and yeah. alexander is an example of a master who comes from a very long line he's very proud of his lineage he talks about all the generations and really keeps taught you know really powerful and i we have pictures here of the altar he created yeah. for the ceremony that happened yesterday and uh i thought it might be nice to sh take a sure. moment and let you really feel into this altar and uh Should what you're going to see here. sure yeah sounds great go. we have two different ones so so first of all look at this is this amazing guys so what you're seeing here this is from the side and you see right in the very front there there's two pitchers down there there's like a glass pitcher and a, a bottle and then to the right you see the yellow flag with that beautiful crystal coming up out of his staff well look directly to the next staff the one that has the gold tip and the feathers hanging from it and you notice that's in the ground when Shri and I first met him didn't you love what you want to how he described his staff well, his staff, he call, it's also a lance. It's also it. a spear, essentially. A spear. And he was explaining to us the height is the height to the heart of the so one the who carries it. the height of your, your, your staff is your heart level. And so you see that tall staff there with the gold 
rim and all of that that was to his heart level but it also is a sphere yes. and, and and so it was really quite powerful that it was it was really your protector both in the spiritual realm and this realm now down at the bottom of that do you see the size of those condor feathers right yeah, lying on the ground wow there. are those incredible look at those condor feathers and by the way this box and and everything you see here he made and so Sri, let's go to the other one that says altar two where i, sure. I want to really give you guys an opportunity to see this incredible there it is this is now we were standing up so you could there's you kind of a shadow there. but you're now seeing to the left that crystal pointing up and you see those two huge condor feathers that are part of his fan and you're now seeing the top you see his painted of the four all the colors of the cross there are painted on his chest you also notice the two feathers coming out of the fist that's the indigenous solidarity uh, and then in the center of that red cloth, that is his beautiful pipe where we had the chinuba. And you see there in the, it's a hand carved. What was, what was that carved out? Is that marble maybe? Or I'm what do you sure. think that was? I'm it was some sure. type of stone. It's the mm. same stone he inlaid in the middle of the stem, the long stem of the pipe there, the roses. And then you see the beautiful way that they decorated our fire pit. And, um, and brought instruments, oh, drums. Right, you see the drums. Uh, there. An offering of fruit. Yep. Uh, and one of the beautiful things, uh, every there's four at each of the four directions there is an offering. Yeah. As you can and, see right here, you're seeing three of the four. And the north is there on the upper left where the, by the drum and the bowl of fruit. And the yeah. north is the dwelling of the grandparents. Hence the white cloth you see tied there. Mm -hmm, the white hair, the wisdom keepers. And uh, so the offering is for the abuelos and abuelas. Uh, it, the offering of the fruit and the food is that they would continue to guide us. And, and when the ceremony came to its conclusion, those fruits are planted in the earth. And that's in the video we're going to show you. Uh, so, so shortly, Shri and I are going to be showing you. It's a very, a very short edited clip. It's only seven minutes long of everything that happened yesterday, including these beautiful beings. And I want to share something that with you guys that, that Shri and I were sharing last night. When, you know, ceremonies last hours, always. I remember with the Mayan, you never knew how long the ceremony was going to be. You were just prepped for the day. And, you know, same thing here is that we knew the ceremony was going to start at 3 in the afternoon, and it would roughly go till 6. Well, throw that out the window, right? You know, it just kept going and going and going. Let's and, say the night came in. And it was stunning. <laughs> and so we do have footage. You'll see this go from day till night. And one of the gifts of Kanyari ceremonies is they're all about music. And so there was guitar and flute and drums and rattles and singing and celebration. And their, their ceremonies are all about the joy of living. All, you'll, you'll hear them singing the word Corazon is heart. Listen to how many times you hear them singing about the heart. And so this is really a beautiful moment because in this valley the reason that it was so important to Shri and I to have someone come here is that we are very aware that we are living on a Kanyari temple we are very aware that we are the only non Kanyari that live in our village and we are so grateful and so humbled and we were also very aware that the Kanyari needed to remember yeah. and here in our little village there is no one that remembers the really ancient stories and prophecies. And it broke my heart. It reminded me of the Tibetan people. And the exact same thing that His Holiness the Dalai Lama is working with is that, that his people do not forget, that the, that the Tibetans do not forget. May all cultures be blessed with their lineage. Mm -hmm. And, and may, may we celebrate that when we invite all cultures to celebrate their lineage is when we discover our oneness. That's when we can sit in a circle and share all of our lineages and each arrive through our own heart at the, the self-recognition of the oneness of the one. Our diversity is our oneness, and our oneness is our diversity. And our diversity is, in right. fact, the source of creative energy. Exactly. We exactly. see. We see that. I don't know what this thing is about. Let's all homogenize. You know, it, it, it meaning let's hang out with one way of being. When we honor 
one way of being and we are open to feeling and, and listening and being a participant in other ways of being, then the creative synergy happens. And so this was such a beautiful gift to have these beautiful lineage holder Kanyari say yes to coming here to saying okay we will come we will we will come to your land because he had been like no you need to come here you need to come to my place you need to come here and so it was really quite a thing and then again it was he who said but it's got to be on 1010 we're like yes <laughs> please do yeah. and and so the reason i'm sharing all of this is that as we remember our stories as we come together when, when this ceremony happened, when, when they came here, what my heart knew and celebrated, and I was sharing with Sri last night, was at one point, as each of our beautiful blessed ones was going into the Tamaskal for a personal life-shifting experience that we're going to be talking about in the second half of the show that you really want to connect with, I whispered to Sri, I wonder when the last time this valley heard this music. Because in the valley we're living in, even though it's a Kanyari Valley, they've forgotten this. And so last night was the first night that the song of the Kanyari was sung by the Kanyari in their temple in probably hundreds of years. And it touched me at a level I can barely discuss. And so it was, it was very deep for them as well. There were a lot of tears and there were a lot of offerings that this valley and it got very very quiet and what had been a cloudy sky cleared and the planets were incredible and radiant and the stars were luminescent all of that was here and it felt like a resurrection of the temple mm -hmm. and so we i really wanted to share that with you before we show you this little film it's only seven minutes long because we have hours of film and they started sharing their prophecies with us. And their prophecies, they believe Shri is in there. They, they, they've already, con they're just convinced he's part of it. And they've already started talking about things. And the greatest law of instantaneous manifestation, I have to share it, is they started talking to us about this coming March. This is while we were up at the temple. Mm -hmm. And they, they just unprompted. It was when we were stepping out. There's an altar area up there. And I had just let Alexander and we were both up at the altar at the same time and he started talking about March and about how this coming March which is what we have been talking about that this coming March is going to be a very powerful point and he said I can bring the grandfathers in their red ponchos here on this land and he, and he said this is the temple it has to be at this temple to this temple in March the entire community to dance for the equinox and of course we have already released the WWA Global Summit to be on that weekend and we had said nothing to him and I have had this vision of these natives you know indigenous beings dancing knowing it had to be hosted here and that we would be able to broadcast from the temple and we had said nothing to them and that is now confirmed that is not an accident we find that even more affirmation of the wwa global summit and the importance of it and stay tuned to it make sure you're visiting wwa global often mark the upcoming march equinox get here live or get there virtually but be a part of this moment because this is no accident and they were talking about the unification of the eagle and the condor the next steps of the prophecy yeah. the coming together of all the tribes and how yesterday we were modeling the coming together of all the tribes we literally had people here from all over the world we were all represented yeah no, it's quite a beautiful, beautiful experience to be in the sincerity and the love of celebrating And the life. presence. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And one of the things that uh, comes forward so clearly for me is the recognition that for the world and the children of the world to have a wholesome oh, yeah. existence, yeah. we need to respect the earth, love each other, and listen to the wisdom of the elders. 
that when we are mentored, when we are loved, and when we live a life of respect, harmony emerges quite mm -hmm. naturally because mm -hmm. we're the respect calls us to notice the harmony that's already there. And then the, we become right. amplifiers of that. And the one thing that I was very impressed with, with these uh, lineage holders that came to be with us. Beautiful medicine men. Was, was their, all of their songs. Oh, they were so beautiful. You're and they hear sang them. a lot of songs. It's all joy. So beautiful. You know, it's, my heart is a star and I shine into the night was one of the phrases. Yeah. You know, and that they are, it's a happy song. And the flute playing is this bouncy, Amazing. happy flute that we're dancing through the, you know, the well, meadows of Shri, life. And it was so beautiful because, <laughs> you know, we, Shri and I were up in the temple with them yesterday morning. And on the way down, just spontaneously, he whips out his pan flute and they're walking down the hill playing the pan flute. And I'm like, this is out of a movie. Like, this is not even really happening because it was that incredibly nakedly authentic joyful oh and my alive. gosh it was crazy amazing it and, really and, was. and so one of the things that uh, comes forward so viscerally for Kira and I is to be able to share this energy and here's oh. the irony of it and, and maybe the beauty of it <laughs> is that not everybody can get here to do this so there will be virtual conferencing, live video March conferencing. March Equinox, just mark the dates right so, now. Here we Be have, here that is, weekend. The opportunity to use the technology to connect, Yay. not to be disconnected. And we will be uh, connecting all over the world. There are going to be worldwide partners in as many countries as we can bring forward. There will be WWA global groups all over forming. Be a part of this extraordinary moment for all of humanity. And my heart is singing that the indigenous have walked forward from the heart of the earth, from the top of the world, and said, we will come and we will open this for you. Yeah. And so I... And that was just so spot law of instantaneous manifestation. So, beloved angels, we are going to uh, offer you this little film, and we're going to uh, also invite those of us that are here you if they want to come around, around and, watch. and watch. They can. So you might hear a little jumbling, and then Shri and I will be back. But you know what, guys? You've got to watch this whole film because it even features rare footage of Sri Ramka finally publicly playing the flute. And did you know he was so good at it? <laughs> All right, my loves, enjoy. Go. Come, come. Corazón de mi clave, la imama y cuna y arere, va curando y va sanando poderosos cañaris. Corazón de mi clave, la imama y cuna y arere, va Yeah. 
Hi, everybody. <laughs> uh, surprise. <laughs> it's me, Bria Rose. Um, Shreen Care will be with us in just a minute. <laughs> I love you. I love it. I love it. Hey, we love that you guys had to be on the air. Woohoo! Hello, everyone. Don't you just love it? <laughs> Nothing like live stuff, huh? There you go. We our tea. We were, and, and here's proof right here. It really is. And my Henry, my baby Henry is right here. He had to follow us down. So welcome back, everyone. And hey, what did you guys think of the movie? Amazing. Oh, Amazing. You enjoy that? Yeah, yeah right? Awesome. And uh, I'm hoping that all of you enjoyed it as well. And uh, now that we have the camera on all of you guys, um, and what, one of the things I was thinking is that maybe Bria and Cherry, why don't you bring your chairs over and, you know, just kind of like stagger so we can see everybody. Um, because it begins at Patty. So maybe put it like in between, you know, like in between Patty and Masha. There yeah. you go. There we are. And then uh, just so we're in between. We're not going to block anybody. Exactly. Perfect. There we go. Okay. And so, all right. So we're, we're now, what happened? Why did our, our camera move? Hold on. There we go. Hold on. We keep going. Okay. So we we ended Alma. So I don't see I don't see Gabrielle at all. Oh. So you want to come on over, honey. And so guys, the reason we're introducing you to our beautiful studio audience and uh, more and more and more, like you have to go almost between. There you go. There it is. There you go. Woohoo! And hold on, and I can just do that, and we're even a little better. Okay. So we were wondering if any of you, now that you've just seen the movie again. Who would like to share anything about what happened, what it was like to be in a ceremony like that on a day where our sacred intention was really about oneness and calling forward this this greater harmony and and how your experience was? Anyone like to share? I'll share. Okay, thank you, Alma. This is Alma Ra wearing her beautiful Mayan calendar. I remember when we got those in Guatemala. Beautiful. Hi, sweetheart. Hello. Hi. I was inspired to wear this. In honor of this day, I had it in my heart. I hadn't brought it with me last night, but I sent and transmitted the love mm. to have it there connecting. I felt the infinite joy, the privilege, the the respect, the welcoming hearts of these wonderful Kenyari men who are, to me, the hope of the world and mm -hmm. the hope of their communities. Yeah, I agree. And I felt this light love energy. There was a green energy that was coming up collectively from us and from the fire. And I saw it go in all four directions and coat the earth with love, light, and healing. Mm. And I knew we were at the exact moment at the perfect time mm. that we said our yes. And everything that had ever happened to each of our lives, no matter how difficult, brought us to this perfection of this moment and I had to embrace my whole life and just say thank you mm, well thank you for sharing so much yeah. yeah I see a lot of others yes go ahead okay Alice I thought you were getting ready to speak there you are sweetheart oh, no, yeah uh-huh I um, agree with everything Alma Ross said uh-huh and that purity the purity from their hearts and this one heart one heart, one heart. And as we we're anchoring and opening our hearts, then the joy mm. chakra. Mm -hmm. And um, also that uh, appreciation for all that has gone before. Mm. Thank you. Basha, yes. Oh, so much love. I honestly was felt yesterday, but one day, honestly, more for a lifetime. Mm. It was so powerful, so innocent, so pure, and so loving. Literally, I was just floating this with joy, and I love the music, I love the flute. It was a lot of magic, and it was a lot of clarity. Mm, agreed. So I'm so deeply grateful for that day. Thank you mm. so much. Well, thank it's you for being it. here, right? All right. Yeah. Who's yeah. next? It looks like Bria's ready to burst. <laughs> 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 well, I what really struck me so so profoundly was the mix of not just the languages but the worlds and the traditions of them and also Sri and Kira and 
how you all just how we all came together and co-created something so uniquely beautiful that um, will never happen again the same way right? exactly just that moment and how they were sharing that it was taboo for so long to right. practice this these ceremonies and sing these songs and and how there's this resurgence and this interest here uh, for all of that and and the, how that's happening all over the world that these older traditions and and um, ceremonies are coming back and it's just beautiful. It, it was really beautiful. Thank you for sharing that. Yeah, that was really, again, you know, when was the last time this valley heard those songs? Mm -hmm. That really touched my heart at a deep level last night. Corey, I know your heart was touched. Absolutely. It was, I felt just a, a deep release and surrender of the ego and just a feeling of connectedness and expansion and lifting up and just rising up into the clouds and, and like dancing with the spirits and the clouds and then the stars came out and it was just and the music and the frequency of that and just and the, getting a peek of everybody else and everybody's just faces changed and expanded and and, and the time in the Temescal and, and the, the sacred medicine was just off the off planet it was amazing, amazing, amazing. so so grateful and wow Mm, thank you yes. Cherry you look ready to jump in on that <laughs> Yeah, I was getting love as a message. Love, love, oh, love. And um, I was getting that we were there, and you know, the portal, the portals open, and we are there to anchor. And I can really, that's why I have to sit on the ground, because I feel that we are anchoring. Yeah. And so, and then I got love, a word love, compassion, mm. healing, and then light. Mm -hmm. And I did feel the presence of Dalai Lama right in front of me. And you said lineage, and I was getting his lineage was there as well. He carried that lineage when I saw him right in front of me. Yeah. And it's such a wonderful experience. Thank you. Oh, we're, we're, anybody have a dry eye left? I mean, anybody? <laughs> All right. Well, let's, let's go right over here to Gabriella. Hey, sweetheart. How are you? Great. Thank you. Yes. Um, yesterday was just a profound experience. Um, I felt so much their hearts and even with really no English, you know, very little English, and but just the energy was there. You could feel it so deeply, and I, I feel very, very privileged to have been a part of that. Mm. Thank you. Thank you, my love. And how about all of us when he was trying to teach us their language, right? right. You know, teaching us all those words. And, and Jeanette, hey, sweetheart, I just see you still bliss-filled. It's like you never left. Absolutely. <laughs> My experience was, was, was incredibly profound. It was one with great connection with these beautiful gentlemen, with, with Gaia, mm. with um, the cosmic spirit, with um, a great heart opening, and a telepathy that I've never experienced before with these gentlemen. And giving me the words of the songs and singing with them was, and, and, and the heart dancing to the beat of their music, as was Gaia, as was the cosmos. All in one. It was just, and I'm still there. I'm still there. We see it's it. Just, <laughs> yeah. You know, really, really, there's no words because that pales in comparison to what it actually feels like. Yeah. 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 Oh, well, I think all of you have said it so beautifully. Is there anything any of you would like to share about your Temescal experience? If you have any, what happened yesterday was that this beautiful man, Alexander, did something that even Sri and I were so honored and, and, and delighted with is that we had agreed that he was going to do clearings. What we did not know was that from the time we met him that morning until the time we got into the Temescal that night, his higher self called him to do, these are the things that people go and pay him to do. Like he's the medicine man of the town. You, come there, for, you come there to be healed. And he did this for everyone. And you're looking at everyone who received one. And so anyone want to share anything about that experience? Because it's really, this is the real thing, guys. This isn't just that pat, pat, pat. And uh, so I'm just curious if anybody would like to share anything. Uh, like Please, Masha, go. It was so sacred. Talk up, honey. It was so sacred. I cannot really describe it. I just felt a lot of honor and 
Okay, so, but what happened? If I didn't understand that, sure, if I was sure. in the Temescal, any of you like to talk about what happened or not? How, how the process worked? I know there was blowing. First and foremost, let's clarify what that means. All right? It means that the shaman has sacred water that he blows at you as part of the cleansing process. I'd like a definition there on that. Okay. Sacred so, branches and padding and opening, clearing, clearing, getting rid of, leaving yeah. yes. yeah, all the yeah. all the chakras, spinning it, was, it out. Yes, shivers of release yeah. for me, ecstasy and, and just expansion. And it was just. And it was also in our Temescal. Yes. So you were in that violet ray crystalline chamber in that sacred energy and that with that sacred medicine experience. And and the reason I'm just exper I'm inviting you to talk about it, and all of you at home that are listening, you can understand why they can't, right? And that's the gift. <laughs> just just connect with where they are and you will understand why they cannot share about this. All right, well, we're gonna put you guys off the hook and go it back a, to our camera. Trust. Yeah, trust and being open to the experience. Yeah, him. there you go, and there you go. Ahead, it was to be asked to stomp on herbs that are on fire <laughs> and true. say, okay, I'll do it. And <laughs> I'm going to do this and jump right in and to be willing to unclothe and have the herbs. Underwear was on. I had go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Disclaimer number two. <laughs> and I had Priya with me. Uh -huh. was right, and there was always a chaperone. <laughs> It was empowering to have my chakras blasted with the energy and the yeah. prayer and the intention. Yeah. And to receive what I felt was something that could have happened a century ago, an eon ago. Exactly, home. exactly. And to know on some level I am here in that age, that time. Yeah. And it's, it's being given to us in this time mm -hmm. to remind us. Thank you for that. What a beautiful sharing. Thank you so much. And yeah, so as you guys can see, that's what's going on here at Tosa Blue Mountain right now. And these, these beautiful beings are with us all week long. And I know that a lot of you beings have been waiting to jump into this show. We have people holding ever over at our 800 number, right here over at our other number. And so, Sri, where are we going to begin? Well, I'll tell you what. Let's start over at BBS Radio. and Hi, BBS Radio. <laughs> and we have Anne from Boise, Idaho, holding on line two. Well, hey, Anne. Nice Namaste. Welcome to the show, sweetheart. Thank you so very much. I'm very privileged to be called upon. We're delighted to have you here. It's your day to get through. <laughs> <laughs> oh, just watching the ceremonies and listening to you, there's beautiful tears in my eyes and the connection with everybody. I would just love a mini soul reading for us that are connected with all of that and uh, words do not come so thank you oh sweetheart well first and foremost we are honored and i, I want to take off my glasses I'm really feeling your heart, your physical heart. And so the first thing I really want to invite you to do, and I'm doing it with you, is to put your hands right over your physical heart. And, and as you do, there is this incredible, it's like a presence that, that's wanting me to just gently bow my head a little bit and just really relax my energy field. And this voice that's around you is this beautiful, it's a very high, 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 high pitch voice coming in from a very high frequency. And it just keeps saying the same thing over and over again. The more that you relax your guard, the greater the receptivity. The greater the receptivity, the greater the ignition. Now, as I'm sharing this with you, they're saying, tell her. As I'm holding my physical heart on this left side of my body coming out the right side right here next to my uh shoulder blade like on the in inner the part back. of the shoulder blade yeah. it's like i'm feeling this energy of receptivity coming in through the heart filtering through the high heart and like coming out a drain on right here it's right on your right 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 there ow i can almost feel it right there at the center of just behind the shoulder blade and they're saying that this is a new flow that, that you're in a moment of like a cleansing flow 
And as you allow yourself to receive, you will relax out that which no longer serves and only that which does will fill it. And so it is. Thank you for that blessing. Much Thank love. you. Namaste. Wow, you know, I um, I think we need to just halt for a moment and sure. have a moment talking about that moment. <laughs> so what I mean by that is, um, first of all, my right hand is numb. Like my whole right arm is numb. So if you're, if you're feeling any congestion, that was a very powerful, powerful uh, cleanser. They're calling it the heart cleanser. And so it was a very powerful heart cleanser that has left some roll, roll your shoulders hmm. because whether or not you're working with you whether or not you're just connecting that was for us all that was for yeah. us all and so it's a really it's a really powerful moment notice if there's anything that you're feeling in your right shoulder or right arm remember we are receiving right now through the left and and really creating with our right and in this month of experience, in this beautiful divine dance, we need both. And we need them in balance, right? We need our left and our right in balance. And so what they're sharing with me right now is to take your hands, my, my fingers are pointed up, bring them, bring them together at the tip, bring them together at the tip, and then kind of roll them in together, pushing, 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 almost isometrically, Keep pushing, 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 bringing it all together. Pushing, 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 pushing. Touching the nose with the hands, holding that. And then they're saying, bring as you inhale, lift. Hold, keep it as tense as you can. And then begin to open, 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 open. Lift on the exhale. Then we're going to inhale as we come down slowly in front. Exhale out. And we're going to pull it in. Lift up. And wow. How are you feeling? That, I th it's a very interesting thing to me to be pushing I, together. Need, and I want to see open. how they're feeling. How are they feeling? Yeah. I want to see how they're feeling. How are you guys feeling? Oh, good. You're, you're like... Like, wow, right? Right? Okay. So so the reason that this practice just came through after this reading is because... Are you okay? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so the reason that this practice just came in after this reading is because we were all, whether we were conscious of it or not, participating in this flow and this stream. And this is, again, another good reminder that... When we are awake to the experience, and October is an experience month, when we are awake to the experience, we can become the conscious co-creator with it. Thereby, every moment is an opportunity to expand. Every moment is an opportunity to up-level. Every moment is an opportunity to remember the master you are. And this was just one of those moments. You're feeling the difference in your body right now, aren't you? Right? So you're going to want to come back to the show and learn that and do it often because that's the gift of this blessed community. Yeah. Every single caller, every single one of you, all of us together forms this community and that's the divine dance, the remembering that together we are better. And I, with all my heart, again, want to invite you, if you are not yet with us on Monday Magic every Monday night, number one, why not? <laughs> And number two, you can be, just go to sriandkira.com. And it's right there on the homepage. And as we mentioned last Monday, we unlocked the Galactic Encyclopedia for the first time in 15 years. And the messages and the energy are, we're, we're all up leveling so fast that it's just extraordinary. It's really like, get on board this train, guys, because it's leaving the station and it's going. Yeah, the opportunity before all of us is to surrender our need to control and to lift into our destiny. Yeah. To lift into that which we truly are. And as we do that, we not only discover the bliss of liberation, we discover the power of the manifest creation acting within this zone of interaction, this shared community. 
Uh, and we are at a time where this evolutionary transcendent process is not receiving the uh, the airtime, you might say, <laughs> that, that uh, 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 would be nice to offer because there are children, there are beings having experiences, there are people that yeah. are saying, am I crazy? Do I need to medicate? When in fact, what's happening is everything is shifting. Right? You know, I want to talk, I, I just want to give a shout out. Hello, Angel, you know who you are. I won't mention your name, but we just had a beautiful man leave here, go back to New York City. And he was here for a private uh, San Pedro retreat. And was this not like one of the most beautiful witnessings we've ever had here? Yeah, this yeah. is someone who showed up that before we even met, I'm being called guidance is like, okay, hand him this crystal or give him this thing. But the, the blessing was that when at the end he said to us, I didn't even know you existed. He's like, I never even knew people like you existed. I didn't know that. And it was a blessing to be with someone who potentially, I think it was for the first time, has been with people who really understand him yeah. and Except to be, love him to be safe yeah. and to be able to be here for a whole week safe and able to thrive. And the beautiful one who arrived and the beautiful one who just departed has my heart forever because the, the blessing of watching that much expansion in such a short period of time is humbling and beautiful. And it, it brought me to what Alexander, this is the, the medicine man, what Alexander said when we were up at the prophecy stone. And then he said it again during the closing chanupa of the ceremony last night when we were passing the sacred pipe. And it was the same thing that both Don Celso and Don Simeon said at Tosa La Laguna. And it was the last time I've heard it. And he said, this is very sacred property it is very pure and the energy here is pure and it carries the temple of healing of this is this divine light and he said anyone can come here with any infirmity be it of the mind the body the spirit yeah. whatever and find healing here and it it was like to me shri I catapulted immediately back to those ceremonies in Guatemala, yeah. felt our time in the Himalayas, felt it all come back here, and it was like that beautiful moment that said, yes, this is a portal, this is a hub, and yeah. that we already knew that, but to have the validation come from such an outside source is pretty exciting. Well, it, and it's, it's very touching to our hearts to witness people who truly say, okay, I'm going to let go of my need to stay in my habits and instead I'm gonna let myself be nourished by this environment uh, and and because some people when they, they say well where's the television you know? <laughs> <laughs> you know, where's the bar you know, <laughs> you know we have a beautiful wine bar we do have amazing wine selections I will admit to that but 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 if you come here to watch TV is, you're not coming to the right place yeah, yeah, what I, I mean you can find a way to watch but think, not don't come here to do it <laughs> Sometimes people think that taking a vacation yeah. means that they have to be <laughs> uh, uh, right? uh, distracted and inebriated as opposed to take a vacation from a pattern and fill with yeah. something authentic mm -hmm. is true nourishment. Mm -hmm. And to fill with the vitality of, of friendship and song and good food and, uh, and an environment that's holding a frequency at the love level. And I mean that quite literally, that this land is vibrating above 500 on David Hawkins' scale, which is one way of measuring the, the, the frequencies. This land is healing. Well, and I, and I want to also share that I really enjoyed that this, this beautiful man who came to spend time with us loves Wyusity and happened to bring some from New York City with him. <laughs> and <laughs> and it was really beautiful because we have the actual Wyusa branches from the Amazon brought to us by Edwin, who is a Shawar, whose mother cures them according to the ancient Amazonian tradition. And then we are blessed to have here for our guests. And that, that was just part of what eating real food, because of course he only buys organic, but it's one thing to buy organic from a supermarket. It's another to walk outside with the scissors and say, can you go harvest this? And this is, we're now eating a good portion of our meals are coming from our land or our neighbors right here. So it's it's truly, yeah. it's, it, a lot it's of people vitality. have never tasted vegetables this way before. We, we you know, we, we learn a lot through uh, uh, comparison, having 
their yeah. experiences. People yeah. don't realize the difference between pure nutrition and common food there, we, until you've tasted yeah. it and been with it. Yeah, we're a hundred percent whole food and we're a hundred percent organic. And anyway, just had to share because in this moment of this divine dance, it is one of the divine dances that we're certainly celebrating. Now, Shri, over here at Oneness Talk Radio, we do have someone with their hand up. That means they have a question for you because goodness knows there's a lot going on right now with those chakras and the systems of intuition that would call on you. So let's say hi to it looks like we're going to Wairika, California. Why you are California, wireless caller with your hand up. Namaste and welcome. Hello. Did you start conference? Uh, you know what? Here we go. Yeah. I. Okay. Sorry about that. Hey. Okay. We're here back. we are. We're back. <laughs> Hi, honey. <laughs> Hi. There's a little, little bit of an echo, echo but um, I, I wanted, wanted to share a dream that, that I had Friday. Friday. Okay. It was. Oh my God. My my. my enti- okay. okay. The, the entire cloud just turned into something, something like, like an Indian, Indian temple, and it was the the, the, the divine Kumar. And thank you so much for your website of the Malish Malish and Ascension. I'm trying, trying to, to decipher, decipher it. it. I, I would like, like to have, have a little more information because he came down out of the cloud and touched my right, right shoulder, and, and I was like, "Fuck you, Happy Nada, yes!" <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Well, first and foremost, uh, please help me. Oh, sweetheart, sweetheart. First and foremost, thank you for sharing. I'm feeling almost what it's right in the center of my chest, exploded heart. It's like a, it's like a thump. That's just going, here it is, right? It's like a wow. And what what I'm being shown so beautifully is that it was the Human, as it was the Hanuman, as it was the, it, and the Human, and Sri, maybe you want to talk more about what the Human is, but this is very much about that infinite presence reunifying with the infinite presence. However, the Indian temple overlay is, is number one in a form that you would feel, uh, you would know. And then again, I'm feeling again, like a boom, like another, almost like there's a, how do I want to describe it? Like, like those life-saving paddles coming in on my ascended heart. You know, it's like that, you know, clear, boom, right? That's what it feels like is what I'm feeling. And they're doing that more than once. And it, it's this moment that's saying, stand and arise. The service that you seek to offer is the service that you are. The service before you now is to remember that. Yes. And so it is. Thank you. No, thank that's you. Right we love you, honey. Namaste. Wow. Breathe, right? Yes. Whew. Are you guys breathing? <laughs> I'm, still, I'm still feeling those electric paddles. Yeah. Wow. Wow. That's the first time I've ever seen like a... Um, like really like an amplifier to the ascended heart. It's it's like it's saying, okay, open, okay, open more, okay, open more, okay, open more. And mm-hmm. uh, very powerful, very, very powerful. Yeah. Did you want to talk about the well, who? Well, I think it's important to recognize the etymology of that because yeah. who, H-U, is the, the, the sound refers to the spirit that is the divine. You could, uh, some traditions might call it the Holy Spirit or the spirit that's the essence of the truth of the divine. Who. And the who man is the spirit in form. The human, the spiritual being. You are not a, a biological animal. You are a spiritual being. Breathe and keep breathing. And again, see, that's, that's you know, the human. It's saying like, okay, more, right? Let's do more. You know, really powerful, really yeah. powerful. So you all feeling that because when you really breathe into it and you really understand the who man, you feel the expansion of it, yeah. right? Then it becomes a, a lift. You know, I always like to refer to it as it's the moment your wings ignite and you're no longer walking. Yeah. It's it's a beautiful experience. And, yeah, and so it, I'm loving this. No, and in the Sufi practices, the who sound is very sacred. It's used with the breath to call in more fully the spirit. Yeah. Who. And uh, uh, very powerful and very beautiful. Yes, very, very much so. Wow, Shri, beautiful. All right, where are we going? Oneness or over to uh, the other one? 
Oh, BBS Radio. Well, I'll tell you what, we can do do that. It says here we at uh, BBS we have Kate from the Bay Area, uh, and uh, she's online too. Let's say hi. All right, hey Kate from the Bay Area, welcome, Angel. Hi, Shri. Hi, Kara. Can you guys hear me? Absolutely. You sound beautiful. Oh, thank you so much. And say, uh, just a big hello to your wonderful, beautiful, powerful audience. Yeah. I'm so impressed to see everybody there. Uh, my question I have for Shri, and it's a bit of a doctrine that I learned uh, just recently. The word Hosanna, coming from the Bible, I learned, stands for, uh, you know, uh, save me, please. And I wanted to ask you, what chakra or what energy is behind that word Hosanna? Because I've never used it before. I want to make sure I heard you correctly, that your definition is save, S-A-V-E, me please, right? Yes. Okay, so that's all about the first chakra. And it makes complete sense that it would be in this moment right now. The first chakra is the chakra of safety. And it is the chakra that until it feels safe, meaning that until you feel safe in your physical realm, until you, you feel really safe with who you are, until you have healed the wounds that keep that chakra open, there, there will be this energy that will always be saying, please save me. And there's one other little bit that I want to offer here is there also is a connection to the uh, seventh chakra, which is an acknowledgement of the divine. Uh, it's coming at the divine from the savior mentality saying, please be here because, you know, I have fallen. I, I'm separate from you. However, there is an opportunity for unification that can come through a sincere uh, surrender to that energy. So the, the seventh and the first chakra always work together. When you heal your first, you ignite your seventh. And until you heal your first, your seventh is, it's not anchored. And so it's a very powerful moment, and thank you for asking. And there was a crow that just howled behind me. I don't know if you heard that, but uh, I think that's profound confirmation. So thank you, thank you, thank you. I love it, I love it, I love it, because you know I'm like bird woman, so I love it even more. <laughs> and right, we love you, you, honey. <laughs> Bye-bye. Namaste. Many blessings. Fabulous. I love when that happens. And, you know, that happened yesterday when we were up on the mountain. And, you know, it, I, I will admit that every time you go up, you and I go up, two things always happen, so much so that we almost take them for granted. And that is drag, at least one dragonfly will always appear, if not tons. And the condors. The condor they comes always and gives us come. a hello. And, I, and they always <laughs> show up when I'm about three quarters up the mountain is when I usually sight the first one. Well, yesterday was no exception, other than yesterday was the first time we went up with our beautiful Kenyari brethren. And they were so excited about the condor. And it really helped me remember that. I've been taking them for granted because we happen to live on the mountain where they nest. And so it's not like it's a real common thing. And so it was really quite a, yeah. a beautiful, a beautiful gift. Well, and yeah. it's important to honor the tradition that recognizes that the condor in South America is the one that can see far. Right. It is the high flying bird. And its cousin in the north is the eagle. Right. Uh, Hence and, the eagle and the condor. And the eagle also is... is is the energy of eagle medicine is to be able to rise above the worldly concerns and to be able to see far and and to be able to be more connected to the divine while still yeah. seeing what's going on on the earth now that's an ascended state absolutely and so uh, as as many of you know the prophecy of when the eagle and the condor fly together we are in a state of unification or unity uh, and uh, and that opportunity is now and has always been. It did not end in 2012. And that was another reason why the um, we shared our journeys with the Maya, with these beautiful Kanyari brethren, because these beings that came and graced us here do not normally work with those that are not part of the Kanyari community. And that is because for many years this was taboo and, and for many other reasons. And 
when we were able to share with them and, and what happened in our Guatemalan adventures and the beautiful seven years we spent, and, you know, Shri and I have been written into the Book of Days. Uh, and that happened when our Seis Kapul Bats uh, ceremonial site was consecrated at Lake Atitlan at Tosala Laguna as a resurrection of, an, of a, a many, many, many centuries year old site. And that energy those years with them and and really completing our work with them because what they were very concerned about was us having the truth told about their calendar. And one of the things that Alexander said during the ceremony last night was that there are many who have tried to learn the ways of the tribal elders who write books and disappear and who come with false reasons and who come without true heart and that they were dancing the dance of the divine, they were dancing the joy-filled celebration of being in a table of unity that celebrated the all. And the way he described it was, when your table is square, then each side has enough. And when your table is a rectangle, then there are those who are left without. And it was a really beautiful sharing. And uh, Shri and I were very blessed uh, before we went up the mountain to also spend um, quite a bit of good time with these beautiful men having incredible conversation about the cosmos and the universe and the, the moment at hand. And with all my heart, I just want to invite all of you to remember, can we pop up the October Ascended Numerology, Shri? Uh, if you look at the Ascended Numerology for October, I want you to look over here at your body right now. And remember that what is that 10? It is the manifested energy. Yesterday was 10-10. October, which is the 10 already, 10th, another 10. We have an amplification of our manifest energy, which is on the right side of the upper lotus chakra. However, that energy is directly affecting this. If you, if you look at it all the way to the beingness, you see that the four, that energy of the four is that Mercury preface that opened up last Sunday. So remember, we dove back into what chakra? Root chakra, our caller who just called, root chakra. So, you know, that's what's going on right now. And so I want you guys to remember, have mercy on yourself. The root chakra, look at how much your root chakra is being assaulted this month. I mean, really, look at that. So so this is why, go ahead, yeah. This is why it's an important moment to dance with the divine. If the root chakra is, is screaming at you, then it's time to look at whether or not you deserve this experience because that would be the life script that would be in front of you. If your if your root chakra just can't stop, then I don't deserve is in your face, one way or another. And so the affirmation is simple, is it not? I deserve because I was born. Period. End of story. Can you try that one on? I deserve because I was born. And really breathe that one in. Yeah, it's, it's important to uh, understand that the root chakra carries that uh, foundational energy of right, of I am in body, and who is in body. And we're back to this discussion of the I am energy. We're back to the discussion of the who man. And that when we are disconnected from our spiritual nature, the only thing left in the body is the mortal coil, so to speak. It's, it's the, the physical and, uh, and, and that which is associated with mortality, which brings in an underlying anxiety that is never healed. As long as the belief in mortality and, and the existential angst is anchored in your root chakra, there will always be an unsettled energy there. So how do you know if your root chakra is, is needing more love and nourishment? You, you're going to be feeling anxiety. You're going to have trouble moving forward. And I mean that quite literally for many people because the root chakra is centered in your pelvis. And your pelvis is the place that's supposed to swing as you walk left and right. The legs swing. Harmony, balance, trust, and letting go. One foot lets harmony, go balance, as the other foot moves go. forward. Harmony, it's balance, very symbolic. Trust, and so are we in harmony? Do we trust our life? Can we walk forward? Or are we tentative, jittery, and, and unsettled? If so... 
Good to know. Meaning, well, you know it, and then seek the love to balance it. Always. You know, every time we become aware, right? Because it's always about awareness, experience, and choice. Is the knowing not an, a recognition of the awareness? And that's the celebration. It's not to judge yourself. And that's that, going back to what we talked about in the first half of the show, that's that seventh dimensional experience trying that one on, going beyond the layer of judgment, knowing that if you bounce onto it, you can bounce right back through it because of that greater recognition. And, you know, Sri, what I really wanted to just share one more time right here is that framework of support because it comes down to this. We've been talking about this during the entire show, but I want to put the graphic up here again. That's you in the middle. You are the zero point generator. This is literally what the law of instantaneous manifestation looks like. It is that moment where you are in sacred union, where the ascended presence is the overlying presence, the body and soul in sacred union, igniting this Taurus field that you're gazing at on this picture right here, held open by your steadfast commitment, focused awareness, and complete trust. It is the epitome of keep your eyes on the divine of keep your eyes on the divine at all times. That If I was to define how do I keep my eyes on the divine at all times? Steadfast commitment, focused awareness, complete trust. You know, we recently had a, another beautiful guest here, a beautiful young woman, um, also from New York City. There used to be a lot of people coming from the city lately. And um, she she was really, really quite beautiful. And she was just so so fascinated with everything we were doing and, and, and really like shocked and like, aware and, and everything and finally I just really relaxed and looked at her and said sweetheart this is you're just looking at what it is when you actually live it and that's really the question your life is what you are living mm -hmm. are you really living the fullness of your consciousness or not your life will reflect that back to you when you really are living the fullness of your consciousness, then the inspiration that comes in, number one, normalizes your body. Number two, keeps a constant stream of connection coming that will invite the mind initially to be challenged. Yet once that's cleared out, like how we just cleared the heart, yeah. you sustain, sustain, sustain. And the law of instantaneous manifestation just is your life. It just, you're not even conscious of it anymore because it's just happening. And that's the moment at hand. Yeah. Divine dance. Yeah. Divine dance. You know, one of the things that uh, I, I used to dance with uh, in, in younger years was how do I get good luck? Right? You know, Law you know, of attraction. Yeah, yeah. I want, I, want, I want good luck. Right. I want a parking <laughs> space, baby. Yeah, I want a parking space. Uh -huh. I want my number to come up on He that. was good at turning the red lights green. <laughs> and, he really and, was. And so there, there, there is a training that life mm -hmm. gives us to understand mm -hmm. that when our passion is lined up with our consciousness, we begin to attract. Right. Now, when our passion is lined up and our consciousness is lined up with our soul's mission, our reason for for being here we attract more potently and this is part of, of, of this presence when you look at that Taurus yeah. graphic the energy the human chakra system the energy you have a funnel at the top you have a funnel at the root and the energy is circulating and, and from one standpoint if you step back from the picture it looks a bit like a figure eight and this is the Taurus field right well what's in the Taurus field your vitality is expressed. Your consciousness is expressed. Yeah. So are you circulating a bunch of garbage or are you circulating a, a congruent, uniform, unified field that I am and I am here and I am ready and I am guided and, and we just move forward and that which is required seems to magically show up. And it's that's, magical. It is magical. <laughs> magic is when we I move outside of linear probability. Yay! That's all mag magic is. Yes. And so we get outside the linear, and now we're living in quantum time and space. And pop, oh, there, there, here's that. And or you stop, and you stop debating if it's real or not because it just is. Yeah. See, that's the pop. The pop is when you're on the other side, the mind drops the question because you just are, and you melt, and the smile arises at the one that would have asked. That's the moment. That's yeah. the yoga of self-ascension. That's the moment. And, and the gift is that when you are living in that moment and you have that boing moment, 
it becomes something that helps you sustain even more. Yeah. It really does. Humanity right now is in a very deep inhale. Everyone's inhaling, 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 inhaling right now. And on the 23rd, when we have this up level and when, when Miss Beautiful Durga, my babe, arises on that lion, those nine days are going to be a slow exhale. So why not let it be a sigh? Why not right now, these nine days, be in your Ave? Ave, right? Hail, hi, I'm here, infinite. Show me. Hey, I'm right here, right? How about it's nine days of Ave, 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 Ave right now. And then on the 23rd, it's for nine days out. Why not let it be that kind of magic? Because that is one way to be. Or right now, the inhale is, I can't breathe, I can't breathe, I can't breathe, I can't breathe, I can't breathe. <gasps> I can't take it, I can't take it, I can't take it, I can't take it. So there are choices ahead. And we are in an inhale, exhale. So the question is, how are you breathing? And that's another reason, i got to say it, wait a minute. That is another reason to download the app, Spiritual Mastery with Sri and Kira. Get the app on your phone. You don't even have to be a part of the Miracle Team. Just get the app because the only way you're going to get access to Friday Night Ceremony is through the announcements section on that app. And that will be updated tomorrow with all of our details. So get in there. And uh, be with us Friday because yeah. this up level on Friday, we, we really are clear that it, it, there needs to be a basic level of interest and self-ascension to really manifest that which needs to happen on Friday as part of our new moon up level ceremony. So the app is your way of saying, you know what? Yeah, I'm willing to do at least that. <laughs> yeah. And then join us. And you're going to get all those other benefits while you're there anyway, including in the free version. And the reason it inspired me to say it again my beautiful, amazing Sri Ramka teaching you and guiding you through the Om Aum breath practice. This is really a val invaluable breath practice. There are meditations in there. Get the app. Learn the Om Aum. It's a Support video. It's easy. Exactly. Plus, Oneness Talk Radio is in there. You have your own player on your phone right inside the app. It's a very cool little thing. We like it. We hope you do, too. <laughs> I tell <laughs> you right. what, we're going to pop back to the phone lines. Okay, let's and, pop back to those uh, phone lines, Shree. We're going to go to Texas, it looks, it looks like. like. We're going to Texas. Hey, to Texas. Hello, Texas. Maybe Melanie. Hey, Texas. Oh, my, oh my God. gosh. Hi. Hi. Welcome. Welcome, Angel. Oh, oh my, my gosh. gosh. I, I love, love you guys. Oh, honey. We love you, too, sweetheart. Are you there? Um, I was just, I would love a mini soul reading. I've, I've been so enjoying the show. Well, thank you. Thank and you. we are honored to offer you a mini soul reading. And, you know, sweetheart, as I connect with you, the first thing I feel is just a slight congestion in your throat. Like your breath is, is like halfway going through. So I want you to really, and it's funny, I don't know if you can watch me or not, so I'll just say it and I'm doing it. But they want you to take your hands, like with the palms facing, you know, facing towards your face, straight up, and gently rest them. So you see where my eyes are, so that the middle finger is like on the outside of the eye, and this one's right here. Gently rest, and then you're, you, you notice how the, your pinkies are almost at your nose. And they're saying to keep the hands straight, close the eyes, and to breathe up through your nose. And on the exhale, pull your hands away. <sighs> Wow. Wow. I know my audience felt that. And so what they're saying, and this is, this is, okay, so they're saying three times in the morning, three times at noon, three times in the end of the day. And they're saying that you are rapidly growing. And there, there's like things inside of you that are bubbling up, bubbling up, bubbling up, bubbling up, bubbling up. And there's things your eyes are seeing that are conflicting with what your mind is knowing. And there are things that your third eye is trying to show you that are being held back by that, which is like, it's like there's this ribbon tied all around this part of your body. And they're saying that your mind will not be able to release this, nor will it be able to take you to the next level. What will take you to the next level now is you knowing who you are. And so we come to offer this to you so that you may. And I thank you, honey, for not only bringing this practice in for yourself, but for everyone who's watching. Two practices came through today. And so thank you for watching. We love you so much, Melanie. You are an angel and you are powerful. Keep going. Namaste. 
Oh, thank, thank you. you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. We love you. Mwah. Much Namaste. Love, wow. Well, you know, Sri, I have to tell you, I'm just sitting here really looking at the breath, looking yeah. at everything that's here right now. And I just want to share with all of you that yesterday we all got together in the energy of the manifested energy. And what are you manifesting? What are you dancing with? Where are you dancing? And are you open to the miracles? If you are connecting with this show, you are obviously open to miracles. And whether or not you're already manifesting them as everyday magic is okay because you can start right now. It begins so easily. And, and one gift that I would like to offer because I have like Zodkiel is the mantra of self-ascension. And so, if you would, bring your hands together. And Shri, would you, would you offer that to all of us? Absolutely. But let's first take a big, beautiful breath right into our heart centers. And then think along or say along with me. I am here. I am here. I am ready. I am ready. I am open. I am open. Guide me. Guide me. And this beautiful mm. mantra of declarations will center you and open you to a deeper level of guidance and trust in your own divine nature. And as you breathe that in and as you receive the gift of this moment, check out SriAndKira.com. Join us tomorrow night at Monday Magic. Let it continue Tuesday night with Soul Mirrors. And may your heart know that the divine dance of this week is yours to enjoy right now. We love you. We love you, beloved. Mwah. Namaste. Thank you for joining us at Shri and Kira Live. To have your questions answered, send us an email to guest at shriandkiraradio.com and check out more information at shriandkira.com. See you next week.